Exciting news on the horizon for automotive enthusiasts. Volkswagen's iconic Rabbit is making a triumphant return, but this time with a futuristic twist. Say hello to the sporty, nimble electric version set to hit the roads in the US. Today we'll unpack all the thrilling details about the resurrection of the Rabbit and its transformation into an electric powerhouse. Buckle up as we explore the revival of a classic in a whole new electrifying era. There is much potential for the sporty and agile electric Rabbit to make a comeback to the US market. Let's look at what we know thus far. For a while now, statements made by Volkswagen executives and reports of seeing an enigmatic test vehicle have been the source of rumors and conjecture regarding a potential electric Rabbit comeback. To fuel the rumors even more, Volkswagen CEO Thomas Schaefer shared a video of a Rabbit on LinkedIn in August 2023 with the message, at Volkswagen, we love the Rabbit. The countdown is on. Stay tuned. Volkswagen may introduce an electric Rabbit or e-Rabbit at the Wolfsburg trade show, according to German auto publication Automobilwatch. This could signal a return for the cherished nameplate in the US. Why the Rabbit would work. From the 1970s to the early 2000s, the original Rabbit, known as the Golf in Europe, was a lucrative and well-liked vehicle in the United States. Drivers loved it because of its sporty handling, affordable price, and small size. Sos and crossovers now dominate the electric car market, leaving room for more sporty and compact options, such as the Rabbit. Volkswagen already possesses the technology and infrastructure needed to create an electric Rabbit based on its current MEB platform, which powers the ID4 and ID Buzz, among other electric cars. Volkswagen has not formally announced the electric Rabbit's comeback or its specifications, despite the positive buzz. It's unclear if the car shown in test shots is a different prototype or the E-Rabbit. The release date, pricing, and target market for the E-Rabbit remain unknown. Volkswagen would make a big statement and spark a lot of curiosity if it unveiled the E-Rabbit at the Wolfsburg trade show or at another occasion. At that point, expect details to be released regarding the car's features, performance, range, and design. Eager to find out if the E-Rabbit lives up to the anticipation are enthusiasts of the original Rabbit, as well as prospective purchasers of sporty electric cars. All things considered, it's amazing to think that the Volkswagen Rabbit might make a comeback as an electric vehicle. The speculations and hints offer a tantalizing peek at what would be a welcome addition to the electric car market, but we'll have to wait for formal confirmation. Rabbit Volkswagen this vehicle marks an important turning point in the history of the automobile industry for both Volkswagen and the North American market. Let's explore its path in more detail. In 1974, the Rabbit made its debut as the famous Beatles European replacement. Designed by Giorgetto Giugero, it provided a more contemporary, angular form than the Beatles' rounded contours. It was referred to as the Golf in Europe and other parts of the world, but the Appalachian Rabbit was exclusive to North America. This marketing choice was made to set it apart from the declining Beatles' appeal in the United States. When the Rabbit was introduced in 1975, it became well known as a reasonably priced, useful, and fuel-efficient vehicle. Younger consumers are searching for something different from conventional American muscle automobiles connected with it. Volkswagen used memorable ad campaigns that highlighted Mr. Rabbit and his lively demeanor to deftly position the Rabbit as a fun and quirky car. Volkswagen's first American assembly facility opened in Westmoreland, Pennsylvania in 1984, making the Rabbit the first German vehicle produced in the United States. This strengthened its position in the market even further. Over the course of its existence, the Rabbit experienced a number of revisions and alterations, including the legendary GTI performance variant that attracted a devoted fan base. Its official global use of the Golf name in 1985 signaled a change in branding tactics. The success of the Golf preserved the essence of the original Rabbit, even in the face of model revisions and name changes. It became a mainstay of the Volkswagen portfolio and one of the most popular vehicles worldwide. In North America, the car had a big cultural impact. It came to represent the revolution in fuel-efficient hatchbacks, inspiring other automakers to create vehicles along its lines. Volkswagen's image in the US was rebranded because of its lighthearted marketing and eccentric demeanor which connected with younger drivers. The Rabbit is still a beloved antique car today, loved by collectors and communities that recognize its special place in automotive history. Although the Vigneli Rabbit is sometimes cited as the Beatles' replacement in the North American market, the thing albeit for a far shorter period of time came first. This is a synopsis of its distinct tale. The thing, also known as the Type 181, was created in 1970 as a combat vehicle for the West German Army. Practicality and off-road capabilities were given priority in its design, 
which included exposed body panels, detachable doors, and a convertible canvas top. Because of its practicality and eccentric look, it was dubbed Kubelwagen in Germany, which translates as bucket car, and safari in other places. Vigalu saw a chance to profit from the rising demand for compact practical automobiles in North America in 1973. They made the choice to import the Type 181, renaming it the Thing, in order to highlight its sense of adventure and playfulness. But in the US market, the Thing ran into problems. Its appeal was limited by its higher price range and lack of creature amenities, safety features, and elegance when compared to the Rabbit. Volkswagen stopped importing the Thing to North America in 1974 after just two years, referring to concentrate on the popularity of the Rabbit. Even though it wasn't around for long, the Thing had an impact on American car culture. Its distinctive style and convertible format drew it a specialized fan base of enthusiasts who value its lively personality and off-road prowess. The Thing is still in high demand among collectors today because of its unique beauty and historical relevance. Following the demise of the Beetle, Volkswagen entered the North American market using two different strategies, the Thing and the Rabbit. With its cutting-edge design, economical fuel use, and useful features, the Rabbit appealed to a wider market and became a commercial success. The Thing, on the other hand, appealed to a more niche segment of adventurous drivers who valued its ruggedness and playful personality. It is accurate to compare the ID2 to a scaled-down Golf or Rabbit. Given that it keeps the traditional hatchback shape while adding a contemporary touch, it might appeal to current Volkswagen enthusiasts. The Prius-like discreet rear door handle lends a sleek and tidy appearance to the design. Despite being a little car, it also adds a surprising and useful element by making the rear seats easier to access. A minimalistic style that keeps things straightforward is in line with the ID2's emphasis on affordability. It preserves a contemporary and practical design while avoiding visual clutter. Surprisingly, some consumers who miss the classic style feature may find some visual intrigue and appeal in having false exhaust cutouts. It's interesting to see how Volkswagen approaches this detail in the final production version. Another way to cut costs would be to forego cameras in favor of conventional side mirrors. Furthermore, some drivers who value visibility and want to avoid any problems with camera technology may still choose side mirrors. The Volkswagen ID2's design appears promising overall. It appeals to a wide range of consumers looking for an economical and useful electric car by striking a mix between familiarity, minimalism, and contemporary elements. We can see more clearly what its advantages and possible commercial appeal are as official photos and information become available. The ID2's cabin is surprisingly roomy and inviting from the outset. It's not a luxury sedan, but it does have enough space for four adults to travel in comfort. Indeed, ambient lighting, which has been a popular trend for a few years, creates the perfect atmosphere with hues that can be adjusted to suit your style. The ID2 defies the stereotype of a car at this price range being clad in rough plastic. The majority of the surfaces are covered with chic and comfortable fabric upholstery. It's a wise decision that keeps everything cozy and reasonably priced. You may also add personality to your room by choosing from a variety of colors. This is when the exciting part starts. Volkswagen replaced the recognizable steering wheel design with a brand new one. Imagine a world without awkward buttons. On both sides of the wheel, however, are user-friendly touch interfaces that have been integrated. It's sleek, futuristic, and hopefully super easy to use. We'll have to test it out later to see if it lives up to the hype. So, how does the ID2's new design stack up? Does it address those annoying accidental button presses? Are the controls even more responsive? Time will tell. But it's exciting to see how VW has evolved this technology. The Volkswagen ID2's interior may not be lavish with leather and diamonds, but it does have a unique combination of cost, usefulness, and some very amazing technological features. The new steering wheel with its touchpad interfaces intrigues people, and the fabric seats are comfortable. Ambient lighting also generates a mood. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to stay connected with our journeys to the world of innovation. Feel free to share your thoughts and comments below. We'd love to hear from you. Stay tuned for more exciting insights into the world of technology and innovation.